Hey, I'm Alec, and this is how to succeed with flexible filaments. There's several different types of flexible filaments, from TPE, TPU, to ProFlex, PCTPE, and Soft PLA. But the two main two you'll encounter are TPE and TPU. Now the difference between those two is that TPE tends to be softer than TPU. Let's look into what it takes to print a good part with either or. In general, it's recommended to print flexibles with a direct drive printer like a Lulzbot or a Prusa, but to be honest, it doesn't really matter. All that matters is that it is a constrained path from gear to nozzle. There are modifications you could buy or print to install on your printer in order to print flexibles, much like Lulzbot Taz 6's Flexi Struder, which is an entire tool head designed to perfectly print flexible filaments. One of the first rules of printing with flexible filaments is to turn off retraction. Normally that's going to lead to a lot of stringing if you're printing like PLA or ABS, but with flexibles, pushing it in and pulling it out can leave voids in the nozzle, leaving voids in your print. So by just turning it off, you eliminate that issue with maybe a minor amount of stringing, but blowtorch, hit it with some fire, and the strings are gone. The biggest change you can make in the quality of your flexible prints is whether or not you dry the filament. Now flexible filaments are hygroscopic, which means they will readily absorb water just sitting in your room but you can dry them in an oven and get a much better quality out of your prints. Take these logos for example. One was printed before drying and the other printed after and there is a dramatic difference in the quality of them. You can also change the infill to change just how much your prints are flexible. Like this rocket part. It was printed with 0% infill, so it squishes really easily. Whereas this BMX bike grip was printed at 30% infill, so it takes a bit more force to squeeze. Now, despite them being the same spool of filament, they do have different flexibilities. So there you have it. Hopefully this video will help you succeed with flexible filaments, or you can go to matterhackers.com if you have more questions to read about our articles on flexible filaments and how to succeed with flexible filaments. You could also leave a comment down below where I'd love to answer your questions. I'm Alec from Matterhackers, thanks for watching. Thank you for watching. If you liked that, subscribe to our channel to keep up to date with all the latest videos. And don't forget, go to matterhackers.com to shop for everything 3D printing.